I'm John Diaz. I am a staff technical marketing architect with the cloud management business unit at VMware. Uh, and in this next demonstration, we're going to talk about how we can use vRealize op uh, operations for advanced troubleshooting, uh, trouble remediation, and, and uh, so forth. Now, what we've shown you before in the other two demos hopefully reduces any need to go in and do troubleshooting, but things happen, okay? Uh, I, before I came to VMware, I was, uh, you know, I managed a virtual environment storage team, uh, Unix team for a financial institution. Uh, and let me tell you, it's, I, I understand. For example, I'm only 28 years old, and so I look like this. Um, <laughs> When somebody's screaming, you know, my application is down, what do I do? So the way I'm going to do this, instead of kind of walking you through the features and everything, I want to basically tell a story with this, and I'll show the various capabilities that we have. So we get a call from our, uh, one of our web developers, and they say, hey, the shopping cart website is slow. I need, this VM needs more CPU. Okay. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Let's go take a look and validate that before we start adding CPU. So I can sh search for that application uh, by virtue of the application monitoring capability that I have in vRealize Operations 7.5. So I know the services that are running on the virtual machine. Uh, I've already labeled them as you know, what particular service or, or uh, business purpose they have. So I know I have a shopping cart web server. Unfortunately, the, the web developer has no idea what VM it runs on, knows nothing about the underlying environment. So having this application awareness gives me quick ability to find out exactly what I'm dealing with at the uh, host level, the guest OS, uh, the virtual machine that it's running on, and then the infrastructure that supports that virtual machine. I can see this all in one view, and now I'm ready to do some analysis and troubleshooting based on that. So since they've asked for more CPU, I take it for granted that they've done thorough analysis on their own and they're justified in that request. I just want to validate that. So I'll start with the virtual machine and I'll look at the CPU usage for that virtual machine. I see some interesting patterns and you know, uh, I don't know about you, but when I'm troubleshooting, I'm looking for patterns. I'm looking for patterns a behavior that changed recently, uh, and then I try to correlate that to an event, or I look for uh, repetitive uh, patterns of behavior that may be intermittent problems, those types of things. So I clearly see something here that's rather interesting, and uh, let me zoom in on uh, a shorter time frame. This is the past seven days. Let's look at this from the last 12 hours uh, since it was just reported. But I can see that, you know, I'm, I'm I have these troughs where I'm you know, peaking at 100% utilization for CPU and then I'm dropping down. Okay, this is interesting, but it doesn't really tell me what's going on in the VM. Do I have a runaway process? Uh, what else is going on? So I can use something we call metric correlation to look at all the other metrics on the virtual machine to see if they fit, any of them fit the same pattern. And lo and behold, my network data transmission rate uh, is displaying almost the identical pattern to the CPU usage on that web server. So I'm going to pin that to my metric chart so I can come back and look at it later. And I may go through and see if there are some other uh, interesting uh, metrics. You know, most of them are, you know, CPU and network related, uh, as you might uh, imagine. I may be looking to see if there are any related to storage, that type of thing. But this is a good start. So what this indicates to me right now is at least I know that the CPU usage is somehow correlated with an increase in network traffic. Correlation does not mean causation. We don't yet understand why this is happening. I want to have a further conversation with uh, the application owner because uh, this is really a rather odd pattern, this kind of spiky pattern. Is that what they expect to see? Okay, are they aware of this usage pattern? Or is there an external process that's not doing what it's supposed to do uh, and it's just creating kind of almost a denial of service on this VM? So if I go back and I look at the shopping cart metrics uh, for that website, 
uh, I'll look at the busy workers. Now, I don't know a lot about you know, Apache, uh, HTTP, uh, web services, you know, any of that stuff. But I do know, uh, you know, I have enough metrics here to make some smart decisions about the kinds of things that I may want to discuss with the web developer. And so busy workers is, uh, workers are actually spun up and spun down by Apache uh, in relation to, you know, requests that are coming in. So it's kind of this dynamic thing uh, process that, that happens, uh, and there's also an upper limit to that as well, uh, and that has to be configured. So that's a configuration item that's totally within the domain of the uh, application uh, owner or the web developer in this case. John, but, yeah. John, I, I like the visual. I just wanted to understand, so this is auto-populated, or do you have to create the tiers and folders, like the flows, the way it is right now? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, this is automatically discovered for me. So uh, we have an agent that is actually deployed on the virtual machine. We can deploy it through the UI. We can push the agent out so you don't have to go to the VM and actually type commands and install things. Once the agent's installed, it'll discover the services that are running on that virtual machine, and then you can choose whether or not you want to monitor those services. If you do monitor them, then we'll start collecting, but that relationship tree is built for you based on that. So great question. Uh, and you'll, you'll see where this kind of also relates to the, to the next step uh, in, this, in this demo. So I've got some pretty good information to go have a conversation with this, you know, before we add more CPU. How much CPU? Why is it behaving this way? Et cetera, et cetera. Um, now, if I look, go back and I look at this web server, I'm like, you know, this web server doesn't run in a vacuum. There's some other VMs or processes. There may be an app server. I don't know anything about the application. But let me do some further analysis on this CPU usage metric and see if there are any other peer virtual machines to this virtual machine that have CPU usage with the same pattern of behavior. So if I select, if I click on selected metric, of all peers, and the selected metric will be the CPU usage percent. Lo and behold, I can see that there is a database server peer, and it is also getting pressure. Now, when the application, when the uh, web developer contacted me, they didn't say anything about adding CPU to the database server. But what I've noticed is, if I add CPU to the front end and allow it to do more work, we're gonna crush the back end. So I want to add this to my chart, and now I'm ready to go have a conversation with the application owner. And the way that I would do that is I would click on this little button to generate a dashboard on the fly. We'll call it shopping cart troubleshooting. And now I've created a dashboard. Once I have that dashboard, I can enhance it with the relationship views and other things that uh, we looked at on the all metrics, but just to keep it, um, well, I've created a lot of these. I've done this demo a few times. Yeah, uh, those ever get retired out because it seems like you'd be creating an awful lot of them. Yeah. No, I, I, I usually go in and clean it up. Manually. Yeah, yeah, I go back in and manually clean it up. Uh, the nice thing about dashboards that I create, unless I share them with other users, they don't have to see them. Okay, so. And, um, so I can, you know, add more content to this. It's really easy to come in here and say, well, let me uh, edit this dashboard. And, uh, you know, we have this nice palette that I can, you know, drag new content in, you know, if I want to do the uh, object relationships uh, view and stuff like that. So I'm not going to enhance it. I just, I just want something really quick and dirty that I can go talk to the application owner with. So here I can just click on this share icon and I can give them a, non, a link that doesn't require a login that they can go look at. I can have this link expire after some time, or it can, you know, if they're like, oh, this is useful information. I'd like to have this on a you know, regular basis. Look, it's yours. I'll keep this dashboard running for as long as you want. You just copy that link. 
and they, they're looking at the same thing that you are. So now either over the phone or instant message, they have the ability to change the time frames, zoom in, all the other dashboard controls that you would normally have in a read-only state. They can't take any actions that would do anything in the environment, like add more CPU to their web server. Uh, but that gives them um, you know, the information that they need and that you need to have a more intelligent conversation. So this is, again, app-aware operations uh, versus Here's my silo, everything's green, don't bother me. You know, no, I need CPU, now you can collaborate, work together. Uh, John, um, a question, it's not necessarily troubleshooting at this point, but in general, mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of information is in VROPS um, and uh, it's, it's getting progressively better and it's all the VMware ecosystem uh, systems gel well together and all that, but mm -hmm. there are systems that are uh, or companies, they have other systems, other environments as well. So how easy now it is to consume all that data that's in here? So for example, if someone say, I don't know, um, they have an AWS environment, they deploy a Kubernetes cluster, which is completely different to this one, yeah. and then says, okay, now I need to go and check in VROPS if there is any capacity available, so I can do these additional things on my VMware environment. Right how easy it is uh, to access that data now? Or is it even possible? Well, so we do, uh, for Kubernetes, we have, a, we have a management pack, so we can ingest either just regular Kubernetes or PKS uh, yes, but to, data. For example, it's a completely different ecosystem, and all someone wants to do is actually look into these metrics or some data. Mm. So is that data available in a standard format now? Or can we export? Oh, to export to get data out of here into a different system for evaluation. Exactly. Yeah, Whatever absolutely. Need to because some automation, for example. Yeah. Happen. No, that's a great. Yeah. yeah. So sorry, I kind of misunderstood what you were getting at. Export data, absolutely, all day. Our REST APIs uh, are fully capable of doing any kind of query against uh, the metric data that you see here. So it's very easy to get to programmatically from that standpoint. There's also a fleeing out there. Uh, it's a VR ops, uh, export tool, you realize operations export tool that you can use to uh, you know, run as part of a script and it will also pull out that metric information and uh, in the system. This is actually a pretty popular request and one that we fully support because it, you know, if we, we don't want to replace everything in the world, right? We want to add value and one of the ways that we add value is to, is to create some really useful data and you never log into this information, interface to consume it. I mean, personally, that's fine by me. We're still adding value and you can have that data and use it in whatever other tools you, you would like to consume that with. So. Yes, because that, that's uh, not only from troubleshooting, but also automation perspective. I mean, not, there are many environments, many clouds that people are now using and having access to that kind of environment and then create automation based on that. Just yes. in time, pull of information is, is important. So yep. I just wanted to check if... Yeah, if so absolutely, the ability to, to, to query for placement decisions or you know, uh, planning purposes from other, other uh, tools is, yeah, absolutely but, supported. But John, <clears throat> what you've shown so far is a lot of data. Mm -hmm. But I'm, is the information coming? I don't. Are we going to get? I mean, this is a lot of great data points, but you know, I'm the, the I'm the guy that this would be sent to. Okay. I'm the guy who calls up my my virtual people and says, "Hey, this thing's running slow. I'm having problems. I get on it. It seems." And if they were to send this to me and just go, "Oh well, here here's these graphs. See, it peaks out." No, I, I yeah, look, I think I, right. So this is kind of a this is kind of a simple example to just show that, hey, I I you know I'm not I'm not getting to the root cause here. Okay, but all right. But the point is is that I don't really have what I've determined is the the cause, not necessarily the root cause. The cause seems to be that there's more user activity that that has this unusual pike, the spike and trough. Activity. Okay, so we're still getting to it. Yeah. Well, the, and the point is, is now I don't just give this to the application owner. I have a discussion with the application owner and say, look, this is what I'm seeing. Do you know why this is behaving like this? If we need to add more CPU, we'll absolutely add more CPU. And by the way, here's what's happening on the back end for this. 
let's make sure that you're accounting for any pressure that you're putting on the database server that's associated with this application. And, and as an application owner, I don't really understand a lot of this. But the point is that this doesn't get given to the application owner. This gets given to somebody else in IT as a, a way of collaborating together to solve the application owner's problem. Yeah, it's a cross-silo. This, this doesn't go to business. This goes to somebody else within IT. Yeah, yeah that's me. Uh, I'm not, the guy not in, in IT. this context. <laughs> Are you, so you're a web developer? No, I'm a Wi-Fi guy. Okay. Yeah, yeah so you, you're, you're not the you're, you're not, yeah, in this scenario, you're not the recipient of this. The recipient of this would be the, the developer that's using that, that reported the problem with the web server. And in my organization, they would send it to me. Well, I because blow, you're. And I would blow my top. And I, would, <laughs> I would go absolutely off and go, I'm a Wi-Fi guy. You know, my VM that's handling the layer three for the Wi-Fi traffic is sluggish. DHCP addresses aren't coming out. DNS mm -hmm. resolution is slow. And they go, oh, see, it's overloaded. And I go, okay. I, I don't know why it is. I don't know. I don't understand any of that back end. Your IT team aren't, aren't do, well, that, that team aren't doing your good service by giving this and, to you. Yeah. Uh, it's not the fault I, of the tool that it's being used wrong. Yeah. But I think there's an opportunity to use. I mean, is there any type of artificial intelligence or machine learning that can sort of... Instead of me going, oh, well, this is doing this on the same cluster, I mean, yeah. is there a way to yeah. look at it and go, hey, you know what, we're seeing this, you know, this one is maxing out, it's hitting these weirds, but we also noticed that every single, you know, application on that, on that cluster is, is maxing out, maybe, and you flag it ahead of time. Yes, but equally that, John, you, you used your experience to determine that I need to look at the database server as well as the web server. That's absolutely the, the kind of relationship that should be driving, you know, that, that shouldn't be something that you have to know as tribal knowledge, it should be something yeah. that's embedded in the tool and discovered through your actual AI and correlation of, of the... Right, areas. yeah, so we're working towards that, I'm not working towards that in this demo, but okay. we're working towards that in the, in the product to give you that type of ability, not only the collaboration that we talked about, but hey, we learned from last time that this is what the problem was, or we know these systems are interrelated and only one of them is exhibiting this problem versus all of them, or they're all exhibiting the, this problem. You know, it's more endemic to the entire environment. So yeah, those types of things, you can do that to the extent today, like this is an example of a dashboard for an application that I built. And this application is a simple two-tier application, but it could have other components uh, it could have multiple web servers, and I could display those on here. So if you call me and say, or Wi-Fi servers, whatever they're called, yeah, know, but we'll go. you know, that, so those those Wi-Fi nodes could be displayed on here, and I could see that one of them is showing red for CPU or memory consumption, and the others aren't. It leads me to believe I need to focus my effort on that particular machine versus throwing it back over the fence and going, yeah, it's just using a lot. I at least know hey, it's just this machine, can we take this out of service? Can we spin up, a, you know, I don't know if they're disposable or whatever, can we just spin up a new one? Does it, you know, have you right. tried turning it off and back on again? You know, that type of thing. All right. But I, I get you, I mean, you know, so that what we wanna do is make it easier to have that cross silo collaboration between teams so you don't get those types of things. All right. Is, is there the avail availability now that, um, rather than say a user coming to you and saying, I'm having this issue, can you look into it? With the AI and the ML built in, can it notice changes and spikes and alert you on that before you get that from the user? Yeah, so any type of anomalous behavior, so we'll, we'll actually identify uh, based on the historic usage patterns for all the metrics that we monitor, we build what are called dynamic thresholds around those metrics. And those, uh, when we see something that is uh, anonymous, uh, different <laughs> uh, behavior than what we expect based on those thresholds, we, we can actually, we do in, in many cases alert on that. We'll say, you know, this is, it's higher than normal CPU activity on this virtual machine, for example. And you could apply that to basically uh, anything if it's, a, if, if it's a metric related to the number of users getting on a web server, the number of uh, uh, access points connected to a, a Wi-Fi server or something like that, and that number increases above what it normally is, 
uh, you could get alerted to that and say, what, well, for some reason, web, I actually had a demo where it's like Black Friday type thing and the tra traffic started creeping up. And then I can auto scale the application out through CAS or VRA. So those types of things are possible as well. And I can scale it back in when that traffic drops down what it's, what it's you know, back to normal levels based on how that application normally behaves. Now that's cool. That, <laughs> Dang, all right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, I don't, unfortunately don't have time to show that demo, but I do have some videos okay. where I, sh I actually show that scale in and scale out. Um, so we'll be sure to get those to you guys. Yep. Can I ask a simple question before we move on? Yeah. We've talked a lot about UI, and a lot of this looks great to me, and then there's some uh, text in the upper right-hand corner. Is what, oh. what are we looking at, <laughs> and, and especially that scoreboard metric? Is your tool having a stroke, or what's happening <laughs> no. there? Yeah, so that's, I'm glad you called that out. So this, this widget, this dashboard widget, is actually uh, called the text widget. And it will uh, display either text that you just type in, static text, or I can link it to some web page. This is actually uh, how the statistics are. There's a, in Apache, there's something called the uh, status mod. It's a module. And that's where you get the statistics from Apache. So an Apache admin would look at this and go, oh, okay, yeah, I know exactly what this is. Somebody else would be like, that's like a wall of text. I don't know what's going on. It could be a display of the shopping cart landing page. You know, it could be anything that you want. I just put it here to demonstrate that, hey, yeah, we're, we're, we're actually recording these metrics for you in the system, but I figured it was kind of a geeky thing to say. We can also show you like live every 30 seconds what the status mod is showing. So is tools pulling that straight out of the OS or how's that? That is, no, this is actually coming, uh, that's a, there's a URL on the web page itself where this is enabled and that's where the metrics come from. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's an Apache thing basically. Yeah, but it, it could be anything that I wanted to display there. It could be soccer scores, you know, whatever, <laughs> right?